Welcome to Inside the Outside. I'm Gary Kirk. And I'm Christy Kirk. So glad you could join us for this episode. Well, whether you've been naughty or nice, we've made a list and we've checked it twice. And in case you haven't guessed, this episode is all about Christmas gifts. There's still time to buy that outdoors person in your life the perfect gift. And we've got some great suggestions for you on this episode of Inside the Outside. So if you're like me and you haven't filled out all of those uh, Christmas wish lists yet and haven't done all of your shopping, um, we've got a few ideas for you. And to help us out, we invited a good friend of ours, Chris Gherkin from GearReport.com. And uh, we wanted to see what he had on his top 10 list. Chris, wh what are you looking at when it comes to uh, shopping for that outdoors person in your life? You know, with how I camp and being a lightweight hammock camper, Nothing that I carry with me or want for Christmas is going to be found on a normal website. It's it's all specialized. It's all my wife gets a very specific itemized list, and it's gotten <laughs> to the point where I just buy the gift and say, "Honey, you're getting me this." I like that approach. You know, when when you asked me this, I was thinking to myself, "Well, what would what is out there that I could pick up fairly quick, fairly easy?" That if somebody got me something, I wasn't going to hate it. And they're, they're pretty generic. They're pretty much, you know, I would use this on a trip. Yeah. So what are some of those like common items that people probably wouldn't even think that someone like you or myself or Christy would actually want or need um, that we could use, uh, you know, just like you said, right off the shelf. It doesn't have to mean a, a trip to some specialty store. You know, um. It is winter time, so the first thing that came to my mind was keeping warm. And Zippo makes hand warmers. Everybody's heard of their Zippo, legendary Zippo lighters, but Zippo also makes hand warmers, both electronic as well as uh, lighter fluid fuel uh, that work really well. And they're good for anywhere eight to twelve hours. Um, I threw on the list a tactical shamog, which is a large quote-unquote tactical scarf i've used one for keeping my neck warm keeping my head warm my face warm i've wrapped uh in on the trail in the back country gathering firewood uh used it to wrap a bundle of firewood um had a buddy sprain his shoulder used it as a makeshift sling yeah, I've seen these on several uh, different websites and have considered getting one because uh, I don't like to wear a hat. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, you can flip those up over top of your head in warm weather to protect you from the sun or, you know, they can keep your ears warm, your neck warm. Um, I've really considered uh, throwing one of those in my pack. I think it's a great idea because it's something that you might not think about and you might not already have, mm -hmm. but it's a great addition. And hand warmers, I'm always cold. I mean, I could probably use those in the summer, but I think those are a great stocking stuffer. I, I don't know anyone who wouldn't want hand warmers if they're going to be out in the cold. You know, and most of these, most of my list, I was looking $25 or less. An insulated GSI coffee mug. REI's got them for 10 bucks. They're almost a no brainer when it comes to just a simple coffee mug in the woods. It works. It's packable. It's light. Um, you can never go wrong giving somebody a knife for a gift. I don't think that anybody would argue with me that a Mora knife is a awesome choice for a cheap knife. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I hadn't had an actual Mora knife until just recently, but I'd always thought about them. And I thought, well, you know, I've got a bunch of knives. Um, what's so special about this one? But when I got it, I realized, one, it's really comfortable. It's very durable, um, very user-friendly, but also, two, maybe $15 and you can pick one up. Uh, worst case, you know, you're out on the trail and you accidentally lose it. You're only out 15 bucks. You can go buy another one. Uh, Lucy lights, the inflatable LED lanterns. Right, the Lucy lights. Yeah, you may not know them by name, but once you search the LUCI, uh, yeah. they're going to pop up and you're going to know exactly what they are. Wool socks. It's wintertime. You can't ever go wrong with wool socks. 
whether, you know, there's a couple different brands out there, whether you're darn tough or I'm a farm defeat guy because they are here in the Carolinas. You can't go wrong with wool socks. And you can't have enough of them. No. And the darn tough, you mentioned those. I've not used a farm to feed. I'll have to check them out. Um, I didn't realize uh, that we had somebody here in our backyard uh, doing that kind of thing. But the darn tough socks, they, they live up to their name. I've got a couple pair and my God, the miles that I've put on them. I wear them to work. I wear them on the trail. You name it. Uh, they're, they're awesome. Uh, let's see. What else did I throw in there? Titanium stakes. You know, that's just one of those... Most backpackers hear the word titanium and their ears perk up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's more valuable than gold, if you ask yeah. me, when it comes to uh, the trail. Um, right now, I don't have titanium stakes. I do have some Dutchware bling that's all titanium. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got the MSR uh, groundhogs and the mini groundhogs. But I have, you know, I've been thinking about, you know, I could shed a few more grams or ounces right there by just switching to titanium. And it doesn't break the bank. No. Uh Assorted ditty bags, Cedar Summit roll top dry bags. Uh, Cedar Ridge Outdoors has the zippable bricks. Um, Terrapin Outfitters, another one of my go to vendors, has their little turtle shell bags. Um, they're all over the place. They help organize what's going into the pack, what's going into the car camping bin. And it's just nice to have access to them. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've uh, started color coding the ones that I use. So I've got a red uh, little ditty bag that's got all my first aid in it. Anything related to my water filtration or, you know, hydration or anything like that. It's got a blue bag. Um, Some stuff I just, you know, jam down in the pack. But for those things you want to be able to grab real quick without having to, you know, fuss around with anything. uh, I like to color coordinate. And I think ditty bags are something you never have enough of either because you lose them or you misplace them and Mm -hmm. you're packing for a trip. You can't ever, you know, find necessarily everything you need. So having extras, even if you have some, is is terrific. So those would make a great gift. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Rounding it out, I rounded it out with a little bit two more um, pricier items. I went with the MSR Pocket Rocket Stove. Or I guess in this day and age, the Pocket Rocket 2 stove. It's a no-brainer go-to canister stove if you're starting to backpack, if you're happy with canister stoves and don't want to go alcohol stoves. You know, there's some trips where I just want to screw on that stove, hit the lighter, and have flame and not have to think about the alcohol or spend seven minutes heating up my water or my food and just get it and go. I agree. I've got the uh, MSR Whisper Light, which is an amazing stove. It'll probably last me the rest of my life. Um, And I've got the alcohol stoves. Um, But I've seriously been considering something, either the Pocket Rocket or one of the ones very similar to it, just for the simplicity. It doesn't take up any space in your pack, hardly any weight. And like you said, you can just pop it on that canister and you can be boiling water in a matter of uh, minutes. And at the end of the day, you just do not want to waste time. Yep. dealing with food. You just want to eat. You just want some water and you just want to eat. Truthfully, the only reason I haven't went to a canister stove for the backpacking is just that um, obsession over space and weight. But there's been times, you know, when you when you come in, I know uh, on the Smoky Mountain trip, you my, my fingers are cold and, you know, I don't want to, you know, have to sit there and futz with setting up everything. You can quickly have that MSR uh, up in no time. Yep. But let's be honest, part of the reason you haven't switched is because you like making all of these all right. random little I do stoves. have an obsession. I've got little uh, bottle cans, uh, you know, you name it. They're all over the place. It's an excuse to go out and buy a cool looking beer bottle or... <laughs> oh, I'm guilty. I'm guilty as well. I'm <laughs> yeah. completely guilty as well. We may not have enough socks, but we have more than enough little stoves around uh-huh. the house. Yep. Yep. <laughs> And last, I, I rounded it out with a, uh, a battery power bank. Um, here in the Carolinas, I've used the solar chargers or attempted to. We just have too much tree cover. I think there's people West Coast, uh, you know, or anything out, you know, once you get out of the Appalachian uh, area, you're probably going to be in good shape. But yeah, yeah, you're right. I've not had any luck with the solars, but uh, a good battery pack. Now, um I'm curious, do you um, carry uh, your your smartphone with you? Do you use it as a tool on the trail or do you actually have your own GPS and a camera and things like that? 
I have a Google Pixel 2 XL, so has a very nice camera. I use it as the camera on the trail. Um, I use it as a backup. I don't want to have to rely on cell signal for GPS and such. So I have a Sunto Traverse that I use. Plus, I keep a compass with me. Just the old, the, the old Cub Scout, Boy Scout in me. I just keep that compass just in case. Um, but yeah, I'll use that. I'll bring my DJI Osmo 2 gimbal with me to film off of that. In most cases of what I'm doing, the cell phone suffices. So I noticed you have some uh, gifts on here. I wouldn't call it for the naughty person on your list, but um, they would definitely work as a, a, a nice stocking stuffer. They would be appreciated, but also somebody in the room that didn't know about the world that we live in would be like, what, you got them Ziploc bags? Yeah, I added a couple fun ones. I use a ton of Ziploc bags. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the Ziploc bags I use and keep in the camping room to use for the trips are actually a higher quality Ziploc bag than what I use in the pantry for my food prep. Yep. Same here. So on a day to day basis. But yeah, I threw in uh, Ziploc bags, cliff bars, peanut butter packets, and garbage compactor bags. All things that I have on every single trip. Exactly. And if you were getting them for a backpack year, they would kind of scratch their head at first and then it would dawn on them. And they're like, cool, thanks. See, I'm thinking you could uh, buy like a gigantic gallon Ziploc bag and pack all that stuff in there, you know, and it would be just like this cool little um, gift pack. Yeah, I love that idea because the trash compactor bags, you know, we had never thought about them before. And a couple of trips back, we bought some and started using them. And they are a lifesaver. And then we've ended uh-huh. up using We don't have a trash compactor in the house, but we've ended up using them for different things in the house too because they're really sturdy. And, and um, those are a great gift. Yeah. And sometimes they're hard to find. Yeah. 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 I was just going to say, I, I, I always have a hard time finding them. And the other thing that I think is funny about those is finding them that are unscented. Because mm-hmm. if you're going into bear country, you don't want any more scent than you have to. And uh-huh. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to pack up all my, my stuff into something that smells like a dinner. <laughs> well, not just bears. If my pack smells like a flower, then I'm going to smell yep. like a flower. And then I'm going to catch all the gnats. And I don't know. After day two, three, four, uh, I wouldn't mind smelling like a flower. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> so um, for you yourself, did you uh, put anything special on your wish list that you're hoping to get yourself? Uh, (laughs) that you can say out loud. That's not fair because I already know everything that's under the Christmas tree. (laughs) You know, as, as I've been telling everybody, fortunately with gear report, there's nothing that I quote unquote need. Everything I've asked for this year has just been kind of a, I'd like to have it, but I haven't, you know, I don't quote unquote need it. Um, I'd like some titanium stakes. Uh, I think for our inner, uh, Tar Heel state hangar secret Santa group, I put in a 12 foot bug net um, tarp sleeve and I'd really like a wood stove. It's probably going to be one of those things that I take out for one trip and never use again, because again, I find myself going back to the simplicity and the quick and easy of a canister stove. But I don't have a wood burning, like a fire ant or a toke's wood stove. So those are just a couple of the hammock specific requests. Yeah, for me, I I definitely like to have one of those fire ant stoves. I put it on a wish list um, for our family's uh, secret Santa. And, uh, you know, I'm like you, I might not use it that much, but... um, you know, I have this stove obsession apparently, and uh, I'd like to add one to my list so that I could try it out. Um, I like it, you know, because it's simple, it's lightweight. Um, you, there's always going to be fuel around, you know, as long as you're not in an area that forbids that kind of thing, you, you, you're you going to be able to make a fire and be able to cook your stuff. Super sturdy too, you know, I, I saw a picture on Instagram today where a guy had a huge cast iron stove on there and he's frying up a bunch of trout fillets and it's on this little, tiny little fire ant. How about you, Christy? I would like Ufa, I hope I'm saying that right, sandals, because they're really lightweight. And after a day of hiking, you know, your feet are sore. Um, No matter how good your shoes are, your feet are beaten up. And at the campsite, 
I never have another pair of shoes. I always just wear the same ones. And I'd love to have some of those Ufa sandals because they cradle your feet and make them feel nice, but they're not, um, they're not your hiking boots. Yeah, definitely. So that's what I want, which is probably not a normal hiking request, but it's also a runner request because I <laughs> want those for post run also. Yeah, I've done Crocs, um, flip flops, uh, you know, I, I've, I haven't settled on what is my favorite yet. I always have something to be able to change into. A lot of times my favorite thing is just to run around in my wool socks and just kick everything off. You want something comfy that makes them feel supported and massaged and happy again. So yeah, maybe that's yeah. what I want. I, I want a, uh, a Sherpa masseuse. That can just follow us around. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's not happening this year. That's not on your list. Uh, Shame, <laughs> shameless. While we're on footwear, shameless little gear plug. Um, Zero Shoes just sent me a pair of their ultralight hikers as well as a pair of their flip-flop sandals. So I'll be entering into the Zero Drop ultralight trekking shoe land. I think the shoes are four to six ounces lighter than my boots. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> per, per shoe. That's nice. You know, it, people don't really take into consideration how much the weight just on your feet. You know, they're like, oh, it's just shoes. You know, mm-hmm. I don't even think about it. nobody. Uh, if you haven't ever done this kind of thing, you don't think about the weight of your shoes. But my gosh, at the end of the day, man, uh, sometimes my feet are dragging. But I'll be looking forward to your report on those shoes because I want new uh, hiking shoes. And I like really a trail running shoe. That's Uh my preference. And and I've already said I I want some sandals. So I'll be looking for your review on gearreport.com about those. Awesome. Well, Chris, I thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Uh, I hope the viewers get a little something out of this last minute shopping list that we've provided them. And, uh, you know, if anybody out there takes advantage of these, we'd love to see uh, you using them. uh, Send us some pictures or uh, shoot us a, a note on the website. Love to hear from you. Until next time, hope we'll see you outside.